Game of Thrones! Okay, so this episode, episode number eight, called Heart Home, is probably one of the most action-packed and exciting episodes in the entire series. I'm going to put that out there. And this, like, this is also including the one episode that was, like, the, the battle in King's Landing. Oh, that, yeah. That just straight battle in King's Landing, and they had one where it was just the straight battle of the wall. No, this is this, this is better. better. In like twenty minutes, they do so much more than what they did in like those two hours. Woohoo! Crazy. So before we get to the what we really, really want to talk about, we should talk about everybody else. Great. So starting with Arya. Arya is doing her thing in the House of Black and White, and Jackin comes to her and is like, "Hey, so you are going to be an oyster seller today." And you're gonna, like, take a look at this guy over here who's basically, like, an insurance salesman, sort of, gambler. Kind of gambling. And he's, like, he bets with people about whether a ship's gonna come in, um, or if it's gonna sink, and, you know, some people are like, okay, well, I bet that my ship doesn't come in, and, you know, he's supposed to pay the money to his wife and kids, like, the wife and kids of the guy who's on the ship, but that never happens. He's like, oh, what, what a bet. So what's going to happen is Arya's going to spy on him, and then she's going to kill him. Pretty standard. So. Also, we have Cersei being told, good this, by uh, the nuns <laughs> and the, the Septon, and that's not happening, and she's just threatening them because she's Cersei. But she gets a visitor. Our, her good buddy, the creepy-ass Meister, shows up. It's like the work continues. Yeah, no, this is no comfort to you in jail, but you know. <laughs> Tommen won't come see you because he's so stricken with grief. And, oh, BT dubs, uh, Pycelle has sent for your uncle to come back to be the new Hand of the King. <laughs> Sorry, can't help you. <laughs> see ya! Yeah. Oh, as you can guess, Cersei is not impressed. <laughs> She's still in jail. Still just, yeah. Just chilling. Then we have our good buddy Tyrion, who's hanging out with Daenerys, and he's just like, hey, yeah, spare Jorah, and I want to be on your castle. And it's like a, a really cool conversation, because they're obviously feeling each other out, right? Um, Tyrion's like, I don't know if I'm, you're worth me serving you, like, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty awesome, I'm pretty smart, and I don't know anything about you. I mean, you got Varys' approval, but who cares? And... Daenerys is like, hey, you're a Lannister. What do you think? And so, yeah, she asks Tyrion's opinion on what she should do about Jorah. And Tyrion's like, uh, I wouldn't kill him. Don't kill him. He loves you too much. Don't kill him. And so she's like, all right, just get out. <laughs> but of course, Jorah being Jorah does not take no for an answer. He turns right back around and is like, I want to fight in the tournament! Yay! Oh, I volunteer as tribute! Jorah! <laughs> oh, Jorah. Oh, my God. You, you know what? I give him points. He is not taking for no. For stubbornness. Yeah. But Jorah. He said no! <sighs> Get out! What's going to make her change her mind this time around, buddy? Live your life. Go on now. Bye-bye. Don't get stabbed. But, anyways, so Daenerys decides that, yes, Tyrion is probably going to be a good advisor, and she invites him to stay with her as an accept. So I am totally looking forward to these two just having conversations. Yeah, it's going to be so much fun. <laughs> just, ah, uh, yes. Yeah, this yeah. is what we waited five seasons for. Tyrion now has some power. He can do stuff. Tyrion is going to change the world. Yes. So are you ready for this? We get to talk about the best thing ever. I think we've summed up, summed up everything else. Like, yeah. like, nothing has happened in this episode other than the best thing ever. Jon Snow and Torment arrive at this wildling settlement called Hardhome. And, like, at first they're kind of like, no, we don't trust you. But Torment, you know, talks up Jon Snow being like, oh, you know, I'm out of word. Because Jon, being an idiot, I love it. But it's just like, Jon, what the hell did you think was going to happen? They're like, how did Mance Rayner die? And Jon's like, I shot him through the heart. <laughs> and they're like, 
dude, why would we follow you? And Tormund's just like, buddy, give them some goddamn context. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> this crazy bitch wanted to burn him. And so Jon Snow, like, shot him out of, like, mercy. mercy. And they're like, okay, cool. And there was this really <laughs> awesome female character. This, like, awesome I loved wildling. her. And I wanted her. She was, like, everything I wanted the Sand Snakes to be. She was just. She was so great. She was. I don't even know how to describe her. She was like, I mean, she had two kids with her that she like obviously loved, but she was she was ready to like tear everybody a new one. She was a badass. She was wonderful. And then there was this giant, and he just kind of like chilled. I loved him too. He was <laughs> the giant. The amazing. giant was fantastic. <laughs> I want like, give me this giant's factory. So they decide, okay, you know what? They get. 5,000-ish wildlings, whatever, like, okay, we'll go with you. And so they're starting to look for them. And they hear this weird noise off in the distance. And then the snow starts to just, like, blow in. And everyone's just like, what the fuck? And it's like, and then they walk towards the gates. And then, like, it's like, close the gate. And then the best sequence on this (laughs) show begins. Because it's amazing. And it's just so well done. Because you never, like, at the beginning, you don't see the monster. You just hear all this crazy <laughs> screaming from the wildlings that are trapped outside. And you're just like sitting there and you're just like, oh my god, I'm so excited. I'm kind of a little bit terrified. Like, I was just like, like what is coming this. through this gate? I'm sitting there with my pillow <laughs> watching this. And my dad's sitting there. The shit. What is this? And like, what are they? And, and what's going on? And I just turn to my dad because my dad is always asking questions. Like, dad, it's the walking dead. There's zombies in there. It's like, okay. <laughs> and like, All right, like I'm, I'm good with this. Let's do this. And then they start breaking through the gates. Oh my god! And it's amazing because they're like climbing under the gates and they're climbing through the gates and people are shooting people and it's just <laughs> like it is a free for all. It is just crazy. And all this time, because before John left, Sam is like, "Hey, have some dragon glass, you know?" And I'm like, "John, John, where's your dragon glass?" John, get the dragon glass. John, what the fuck, man? And so it takes a while for John to finally be like, I should probably go get that dragon glass. And so he runs to the, like, building where they had their, like, meeting, and it's on fire, and there's, like, not a white, not a zombie, a, like, honest-to-God white walker is, like, walking through the fire, and I'm, like, you know, like, through the building, through the, not actually the fire, because he died, but he's walking, and I'm just like, Oh I have waited since the very first episode for this moment. <laughs> this is legit. I mean, we saw Sam fight a White Walker. Cool. Cool. Jon Snow is about to, like, fight a White Walker, and it does not go well for him. <laughs> he just, he fails. The White Walker's just like, hey, I can do this in my sleep. Like, you know, like, the whole, he, he doesn't get to the dragon glass. He just... He picks up just a random sword and, you know, a white walker, like, destroys it with the magic sword. And then finally, you know, he's groping around and he gets, you know, the sword that Mormont gave him. And he's like, well, I'm probably going to die, but what the hell, let's go out with. And Valerian steel is magical. And you know what? Didn't see that coming. I figured the dragon glass was the only thing that could. They meant, I remember them talking about it, Ned talking about it, like Valerian steel being, like, special because it's, like, Valerian. I, everything Valerian is special. <laughs> they got Valerian dragons, they got Valerian Well, because, and... remember, he has, like, ice was Valerian steel, right? And it was, like, the Stark family sword. Oh, I know so that. I kind of figured that Valerian steel was going to do something against the White Walkers. Uh, if it was just special steel, I would have been like, okay, cool. But, but the White Walker exploded! <laughs> <laughs> so anyways. Yes! Back to the violence. So the White Walkers... <laughs> have way more number than they are just like they're zombieing everything and then you've got the giant wandering the around the giant's like the best because he like <laughs> books it out of that burning building and it's just like <laughs> he's just like oh got one got another one stomp 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 giant's <laughs> having the best time of his life like, <laughs> the giant's got no problems with this he's just like but the thing is like they are being overrun like this is not a battle this is a slaughter and I think the moment that that was really like really well done where it was like hammered home was Tormund and Jon are standing there and they see all like the whites on top of this, this, this cliff and there's like one of the white walkers looking down 
and the whites just start jumping <laughs> off of this cliff, like, you know, lemmings running <laughs> off. And they're looking there, and they're like, well, okay, I guess they're, like, offing themselves. Like, cool. That's this, weird. <laughs> this, the, eventually, I mean, the pile will be high enough that they're not going to, like, die. And then they start getting up and chasing them, and I'm just like, no, get out, get like, fucking out, get out, get out. And then, and then our really cool woman, I don't know what her name is, she, she was just cool. She was fighting everything, she was doing amazing, and then she runs into these child white walkers, and that's it. She's done. She's like, out for the kill. Yeah, I mean, I don't really blame her. I mean, like, how do you react to that? You were awesome. You had, like, 15 minutes of screen time, but we loved you for all of them. Ugh, she could have been so cute. I know, she could have been so awesome. I would have I would have paid money for it. I know. But anyway, so, John and Tormund... <laughs> Get to the boat. I love, okay, the best part about the getting to the boat bit was the giant again. Because the giant's just like, I am not waiting for one of your puny little crafts. And he just like runs into the water. Just like, takes, a couple of, go. takes a couple of white walkers with him as he goes. And it's like, ah. But I think, okay, my favorite shot of the entire scene was the last shot. Where John looks back. And the Night's King is standing there and just looking at John, like, you know, all wide-eyed and, like, mythical. And he raises his hands. And everyone dead stands up because they're now whites. And then it's just like, yep, you see what happens? You see what happens if we don't work together? This shit happens. <laughs> you see that? That's, like, over, like, that's thousands of people now we have to fight against. This is fucking this is like, disastrous. Great. Like, Everything that's happening in King's Landing seems so inconsequential now. <laughs> this, oh, I just, I just want them to come over. What if, what if the White Walkers were your parents? <laughs> How satisfying would that be? It's just like Ramsay sounds like I got this. Oh no, I don't got this. Uh, I know. I don't. like Ramsay's. What's wrong with you? You should totally. Oh, I don't. Get I I either. don't no no. I don't think I don't think they'd get Ramsay, but they would totally get Roos. <laughs> I I just I, they'd get Roos. Like Roos is doomed because, I think Ramsay is smart enough, to like, that's a white walker. <laughs> I don't stand a goddamn chance. Roos Bolton is so full of himself. He'd be like, I have a Valerian steel, and then they'd eat his face. So there you go. That's what you want. That's, that's what, what I that's, want. That's what you want. You want to see Ruth Bolton like. I know what I want to see. What? I want to see Sansa push Ruth Bolton <laughs> off the wall into a pile of White Walkers, I and then he's like, "I totally got the oh no, there goes my face." And then you know, Ramsay would kind of be like, "Hey, baby, hey, <laughs> you and me, you and me, girl, let's do this." And Sansa would just be like, and then Brienne would sneak past and just stick her head in. Bam. Oh, it was all around. <laughs> <laughs> this oh. was pro yeah, this was one of my favorite sequences ever. It was so entertaining. It was so well done, like the pacing, like the like the shots, everything was just so tight. You weren't thinking about anything else. You were just like shit shit shit. Yeah, shit. you were sitting there and you're just like, this is not gonna go well because like I said, this was not a battle. This was a massacre. This did happen in the books. The only difference I think is that John was not there. Yeah, it happened off screen in the books. Like it's something that's Which is referenced. Sad. Yeah. Because yeah, I think he clearly missed a great a great sequence. And he does tell stories for like characters that you never hear from again kind of thing. Mm hmm Which I get. Thank you, Game of Thrones, for something like that. Yes. This season may have pro like started half on very very shaky ground and i don't know how i still feel about it but that was good if you've done something right you did that right <laughs> i'll give you that okay i give you four fingers and a lens cap <laughs> all right so that has been hard home what did you think about the episode what were your favorite parts what did you think about the battle have you seen the making of definitely check out the making of because it's so cool because there's so much of this scene is actually practical effects which is crazy. I love practical effects. Like, if you can find a great, like, there's a good balance. If you can find that balance between practical effects and CGI, you're good. Because, like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can't just rely on one. But if you can find the blend, it's it's magic. So, 
see you next time.